Well, here we are again, talking DC's universe, the DCEU. Batgirl was just canceled, leaving many fans fearing for the likes of Blue Beetle, Black Canary, and tons of other projects. But while we wait to hear about those, the thing I want to address is what DC needs to do for the future of this universe. And for me, why do you care? Because after yesterday, we heard the Warner Brothers earnings call that they have a 10-year plan that they're going to follow in the structure of what Kevin Feige, Marvel, and Disney have done with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is something that we have heard so many times before. L literally, how many times have DC set up a plan and then not executed? This is what we're going to be discussing today is how to fix the DCEU. But why should you care? Why should you care about what I'm saying? Because there's thousands of other people saying the same other stuff or maybe even closer things to giving their reasonings on how to fix the DCU. Well, hi, my name is Zach. You might have seen me before on YouTube and I talk a lot about Marvel, Star Wars, and just in general, every single piece of geek culture. The DCU and DC and pertaining to me is the thing that I grew up with the most when it comes down to comic books, shows, movies, it was the DC universe that I was elaborated with, specifically, of course, Batman, but also the likes of Shazam, Superman, and so many more. I was that weird kid that when people would talk about Justice League Unlimited and they would say, oh, I love Batman, I love Superman, I love Wonder Woman, I'd be that one kid that says, oh, I love Martian Manhunter. He's my favorite. Talking about that, the DC universe has been something that I've wanted them to catch up. I want them to be just as successful as Marvel for so many different reasons because I love these characters. And in fact, I have loved almost every single one of their movies. They've had some not so great ones, but they've also had some movies that I've very much appreciated to even loved. But it's always come down to I go watch the movie and I don't know what's next because they're so reactionary. A movie might do great, but then it never gets a sequel. A movie might do okay-ish, but then we get a sequel to it, and that sequel could be one of the best things ever. DC doesn't have a plan. They haven't had a plan. They don't know what they're doing. And they have been doing some decent things too. I won't lie. They've actually done some great things for this universe. I'm something that I wish Marvel would take a play out of. But let's start this. How to fix the DCEU in, you know, five, seven easy steps, I guess. <laughs> You've changed things. Of course, if you guys are new here, though, and you love talking movies, TV, and all sorts of other geek culture, this is truly the channel for you guys, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button while you're here, as well as leave your thoughts on what you want to see happen with the DCEU. With Batgirl now canceled, do you hope Leslie Grace decides to come back, or the fact that they even get the user? I hope she does. I really think she was would have been a great choice for that. But as well, what other characters do you want to see? I have a, quite a few other DC videos coming up in the next few days, some shorts, some not. You're definitely going to want to stay tuned for those, because one of those is actually talking about some canceled DC projects that I wish we would have seen. Start with the things that would actually save this all. And first, we have to establish a plan of what the story is, where and who our main players is, and what is the end game for this 10-year plan. Like we heard yesterday, they have a 10-year plan, but who is involved? Who are the studio heads leading this? What producers are going to be involved with this? What creative minds are you bringing into this? Yeah, you could have a 10-year plan, but who is going to be the person pushing you through that 10-year plan? And what happens when one of the films just does okay? Or maybe isn't the best. Or maybe it, it is great, but it only, you know, garners like $400 million at the box office. You decide to become reactionary and cancel all their plans and shift and change because that one movie did bad? That's something that you can't do. That's something that DC has done in the past. And that's why I have to say that we have to establish a plan of what the story is, where and who our main players are. And I think we can assume after going off the meeting of what the main players will be. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, the main trinity of heroes that we would need. The Flash and Aquaman are also a couple others that I'm sure they're looking into and probably even Greenland. That's what they really need to decide on is that overall line. But leading in, what is the next thing they should decide on? Well, the next thing is... What do you do with the current DCEU slate? So obviously we have Black Adam coming up. We have the Shazam 2 sequel, and I'm very excited for both of those. But we also have an Aquaman 2 movie that has already been filmed and started getting test screenings, and of course a Flash movie. And they announced yesterday that all of these will be released. None of these are being canceled. They've seen the movies. Apparently they're very excited about them. We will still see about that, but I still believe that these movies will all be coming out. In fact, I know some people that have actually seen these films. I've heard actually really decent things to really great things about each and every one of these movies. So those are things and establishments that I'm excited about. But you might have those. But what do you do with the universe that you've already laid out? Well, The Flash was supposed to kick off and reboot and rechange everything with Michael Keaton's Batman coming back to being the main Batman for this universe as we were going to see in Batgirl. 
but that obviously probably isn't happening anymore and probably is one of the biggest reasons for why Batgirl was canceled. Girl, from what we understand from certain results, was actually getting the same test reactions as Shazam Fury of the Gods, which has now only gone up in certain test reactions due to reshoots and changes in behind the scenes. Girl probably would have had the same thing, but the best thing you can do is soft reboot with The Flash. Change out the actors you need to and understand that your audience members will know and understand if you switch or change out an actor. We need a Batman in this world. We need a Superman in this world. If you can't get Henry Cavill to come back and commit to being the main Superman, if you can't give him your damn movies, we can't give Henry a damn movie, then recast for what you need to do with Superman. The same thing kind of goes for Ben Affleck. Love to see Ben Affleck come back as the main Batman for this world. We know that he's going to have a cameo in Aquaman 2 now. We know that he's in The Flash. But apparently The Flash was supposed to be his swan song. I, there's a little bit of me that thinks that there's a conflicting feeling to that, that maybe that is not true so far. But if you do need to recast, if you do need a Batman in this world, it's okay to recast. We will understand. I mean, John Hamm's right there. He would be an awesome Bruce Wayne. I think that's what they really need to decide is, okay, are we doing just a soft reboot? Or do we reboot completely and just say that Black Adam and Shazam are in their completely own world? And this will be the new DCU going forward. Aquaman and the Flash, maybe they somehow connected to that, or maybe they don't at all, and they leave those behind and recast those roles eventually. I hope not, because I love Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Ezra Miller is something else. In general, as we look at these characters, what are you to do? You need to decide if you're going to do a soft reboot, and everything decides who is staying in this universe, who needs to be recast and brought in. Again, your audience will understand. I'm sure people watching this will understand if you recast a role. You've done it in the past. We get it. Third, and most importantly, you need to keep the Trinity a thing. I absolutely think it is insane to me, again, that we do not have a Superman movie leading the pack, that we do not have another Batman movie leading the pack, that we have a Wonder Woman movie, two of them, and, you know, apparently we're getting a third one. I will believe it when I see it, but these are your three main leaders of the DC universe. When you looked at Marvel, what were the three main heroes of that going into the phase one, phase two, phase three? It was always Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor. That was the Trinity over there. You need the Trinity here being Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. And it's okay to start throwing in a Green Lantern here. It's okay to throw in Aquaman, a Flash, because they are also a big piece of the Justice League and bringing them together. But the fact is... When you look at the original phase that they decided to start this universe out on, to try and catch up to Marvel, we have one solo Superman movie. We have zero solo Batman movies in this universe. Two solo Wonder Woman movies. Come on. That, that, that's a joke. Two team-up movies already. And I like those two team-up movies. Not the original version of Justice League, but the Zack Snyder version. I like those versions. But come on now. The buildup would have been even better. And I think DC has the strongest heroes and some of the strongest stories to be able to tell these stories. Come on now. Do better. And most importantly, something that I really want to lay out in here is that you still need to continue to let your creatives and let the visionaries come in to form their own visions while staying in the universe. This is something that Marvel does pretty damn well. Now, I'm going to emphasize this a little bit more in just a second because I know a lot of you guys are like, what do you mean? Marvel sometimes controls a lot of things. Yes, but what they do really well is letting their directors come in and they're like, hey, feel free to write your own story. We just need you to go point A, point B, point C. James Gunn has very much said this, is that when I made the first Guardians, they only said, hey, you know, can you, you know, we have a little bit of the Infinity Stones and Thanos into there. We would appreciate that. He did it. But also the rest of the story was directly his. Now, not every Marvel's movie has definitely been this way, but some have. And that's where I go as far to continue this. It's okay to let your creatives do their own thing. If you're going to bring in a Sam Raimi to do, I don't know, a John Constantine movie or Justice League Dark, let Sam Raimi do his thing. Let Del Toro, if you were to get Del Toro, who was supposed to do one so long ago, and that would have been awesome, let Del Toro do his thing. But, you know, tell him, hey, you know, we just need this, this, and that to connect to the world. However else you want the story to go, feel free to. And let these visionaries come in to form their own while staying a part of this universe. It's okay. Because if you get great directors to come in and you still, you know, look over their work and be like, okay, we see where this is going, you shape the world that you are trying to create. But I also hope, this is one thing that I think DC has actually done great, is letting people run wild, letting some of these creatives go great. And, you know, there can be pros and cons to this, but when you let a director like a James Gunn come in and make The Suicide Squad, easily one of my favorite films of the last 10 years, 
I love that movie. I saw it. It was the most fil- times I've seen a film in theaters in the, like the last five years. I saw it, I think, about 15 times in theaters, and I love that movie. I love that movie so much. I've seen it countless times at home now, and that is something that stuck out to me so much. But you let him come in, and you may- let him make a full-on James Gunn film. And while it did not do good at the box office for multiple different reasons, it was awesome. Then you see Matt Reeves' vision for The Batman, which is arguably my favorite Batman film of all time now. It's exactly what I wanted to see Batman be from the comics. And I know that that movie was not for everybody, but you let Matt Reeves make a crime noir film in a comic book realm. That is freaking awesome. Do not lose sight of that. That's something that I wish Marvel would actually do is doing one-off films like this or doing separate universes films like this where creatives can come in and tell a different story with characters that we are familiar with that aren't tying into the overall universe. Now, of course, yes, the Suicide Squad technically does tie into the DCEU, but it still also really doesn't, and it was freaking cool to see how they were able to do that. But I mostly specifically am talking about Matt Reeves' Batman and, of course, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. I would love to see more darker tales with that. And I know we are getting Joker 2, which I still don't think needed a sequel, but I'm quite interested in at least seeing it. But that's still okay. Okay to remember that we still need these separate things to keep the universe fresh, creative, and different than what we have seen before. Because Marvel does not do this. And this is the one thing I think DC has on Marvel is the fact that they let their creatives run wild like this and go make a completely different universe to film and not have to connect it to an overall universe. That is okay. Please do not lose sight of that. Look at the entire overall structure. People might be like, well, couldn't you confuse audience members? No, as long as you do great marketing, which we know Warner Brothers can do. Fifth and final, there's a few things in this fifth and final thing for how they can execute this plan greatly. One, stick to the plan and not be reactionary. We mentioned this at the top that this is something they've done in the past. Do not do this. But two, look at your entire plan. What characters, who are going to be the main setup, and what is going to be that final villain that they have to go up against? Of course, Darkseid is one of the biggest villains. I would argue, though, that they should pick someone a little bit lower scale. Maybe a Brainiac would be kind of cool to introduce him a little bit earlier on in the phase and then bring him up. I think when you look at this 10-year plan, 10 years, I mean, Darkseid is probably going to be the main villain that they're going after. And, you know, I think deep down they are going to try and keep the DCU for what it is, but just reboot it softly and bring about some of these characters. Bring Shazam, bring Black Adam into this world and start structuring, connecting everything into its own realm. It's okay to keep them solo. It's okay to have these little interconnected things and to have connective tissues throughout the entire phase, but you have to address that right off the bat. Who are your main players? We need a Superman. We need a Wonder Woman. We need a Batman, like I already mentioned. But you also need to not forget about the smaller characters that could come in to further out this world. Something like I mentioned, Blue Beetle, which I think would be a really cool and unique twist. And you know, if they're looking for their own Spider-Man younger hero into this world, Blue Beetle could be that. Do not cancel Blue Beetle, please. I need a Blue Beetle movie. Things like that that I'm really hoping to see from the DCU, And I think that is how you can fix this. I know it's way easier said than done. But if you get really great producers, creative heads in there, and tell them, Let's formulate, let's create this world, keep the structure going, and absolutely continue to further out what the universe needs. I've always said it, Superman was not like, I liked Superman as a kid, but growing up, Superman has never become one of my favorite superheroes until Man of Steel, because Zack Snyder's vision for that was so different, and I loved what he'd already set up, and I would not care if we got a Matthew Vaughn or a Christopher McQuarrie coming in to direct a new Superman movie. Or even if you look at the likes of other characters in the DCU. There are ways to establish characters that maybe didn't work before and make them work for the timeline now. Same way that Marvel did. I was not a big fan of Captain America growing up. Wasn't the biggest fan of that character. But as they showed him in the movies, I came to love that character more and more. Same thing with Thor. Same thing with Hulk. But I do like Hulk way more in the comics now after revisiting certain arcs. And that's the best thing that DC can do. DC has some of the greatest lineups of heroes and stories to ever tell, and I believe that the DCEU can be fixed with just these few steps. Take them into consideration, get the best creatives and producers you can get, and I think we have something solid here. So overall, I'm going to be optimistic on this. I'm going to see over the next five years what they actually do after these next few films release, what are they going to be announcing, what are they going to be giving me, and all sorts of things like that, and I just really pray that they still keep the creative heads in there, letting them do their own thing in their own world, like Matt Reeves and what he wants to do, but at the same time, still overall connecting this universe and letting the little characters like a Peacemaker show live and let on. 
this is what you can do to further out this universe. You have a streaming service that's coming out next year that apparently they're getting rid of HBO Max, which is dumb, but okay. I'm excited to see all these different things, and I'm very excited to see all the differences that happen here. But guys, let me know down below what you guys want to see from the DCEU. I do have a video coming up about 10 movies that I want to see in the DCEU, as well as a movie talking about some of the movies that got canceled that I wish we would have seen, and maybe will one day live on inside this world. But thank you once again, guys, for watching this. You guys are really all the best. But of course, until next time, stay classy.